Now you might wonder, the recent videos being a little bit domesticated with, about my sofa and various things, what that's got to do with Englishness and England. Well, an Englishman's house is his castle and during the winter months I need to do something about my little castle, my little piece of England and I'm trying to do it up and make it look nice. So uh, I'm, I apologise or rather maybe I don't apologise for a few videos which are a little domesticated and showing off me sorting out my little patch of England. But don't worry, I will be out and about. I've got some very interesting videos coming up with Ollie, remember Ollie, and Dumpman. Yes, the man of the disused railways. They're coming up. But this one is another back at home thing. And I've got to sort out this load of old rubbish. Now, I grant you, my house, and particularly my back garden, is a right old mess. The other day, um, I went and picked up some logs from um, a very good friend of mine called Liz, who Liz lives in Steep, near Liss in Hampshire. And she very kindly gave me some logs. And also, one of my other viewers, Lynn B, um, advised me that there was a skip in which there were some offcuts that I could uh, go and grab. I asked the owner of the house and they said it was fine. So I need to pack all this stuff away. I want to chop up with my chainsaw some of the bigger pieces and get them stacked because the temperature now is getting a bit cooler. So I want my house, my English house, to be warm during an English winter. So that's the purpose of what I'm going to be doing, part of what I'm going to do today. And you'll appreciate everything takes a hell of a lot longer when you've got to set the camera up all the time. So I've got a number of these builders bags with different di bits of wood in and I want to store them in different places to so that I can keep the garden relatively free of access. Um, so I've got this little store here which still has the remnants of what was in my van on the original conversion, not the one I've done, but the one when I bought it with the stuff that was in it. I haven't really worked out what to do. Bits of old plywood and some timber. And it's just stored there. I've been burning some of it. I thought it might have been useful for other things, but to be honest, it's just in the way. So it's been disappearing in the SE, which is a good thing. Um, I've still got plenty of it, but um, I need to sort that out. But first, I think I'll just empty this, this white bag of uh, the skip stuff, the offcuts, into there and then get onto the logs. Now I've discovered in the bag there's a number of these sort of round outdoor what looks like chopped up posts from perhaps some decking or something. It's probably pine, I imagine, and it's no doubt it's probably treated as well. So it's not a good idea to burn that. However, in sh you know, little, little of them in small quantity uh, spread with the normal wood, I don't think that's going to make much difference to the flue. But if you were just burning tons and tons of this day in, day out, I think that would be pretty grim. Uh, and not advised as far as I'm aware. So I, I always try to mix up the stuff with the oak and the ash that I normally burn. So, but it burns quite fast and it burns very hot. So it's great if you want to get the fire going quickly and then put on the, the more slower logs. So I find that useful. So I'm gonna shove those down here by the Essie ready for this evening when I light up the old fire. Right, there's more to do. Oh, 
so as you know, I do like to bring in some of the logs, stack them up in the hallway here, um, mainly because it saves if it's a wet, miserable, cold day. I don't have to open the back door. I've always got a nice log supply in the house. And I just find logs in the house very calming, actually. It's a little bit of nature inside as well. So I quite like that. Right, let's get on. Uh, you just sit there and take it easy. Watch me doing all the work. No, don't get up. Okay, that job's done. Whew. And now, before I get the chainsaw out and chop up uh, these slightly, look. Bigger, chunkier logs which I want to slice. I, uh, I've got to move some of this um, old cupboard that was in Billy's room. He left the house in February and it's been in the back room, the junk room since then. I've now moved it outside because I'm slowly going to get stuff down to the dump, including stuff inside the shed. So I just want to move that off the wood rack over to here so that I can, um, once I have sliced up these logs in the bag behind me, I can stack them on the wood rack and get them covered. And then that's a good job done. So let's move some of those. This is my junk room. It's actually the dining room of the house. Um, used to have the Vogue Show studio in here. And for some reason, uh, everything that is not required or is in the way has gravitated over the last uh, six, seven months into here. And it's a mess. And that's why I need to get to the dump. I need to sort out a whole load of stuff. It's just been a bit of, a a nightmare but a useful space for placing stuff particularly for things like hello uh, this and uh, this which I'm going to use on the logs I'll see you outside Now, I find this quite scary. Uh, I'm a bit nervous about doing this, especially on my own. There's nobody here to spot me or make sure anything doesn't go wrong apart from you. So if anything goes wrong, 999 is the number. I may be just lying on, wait, I would have had to have uploaded this, wouldn't I? Oh, never mind that. Um, so I'm just gonna film this slightly from a distance so I can actually concentrate on what I'm doing rather than think about the filming because I'm already beginning to shake. Right, let's get on with it.
Well, I'm not going to do them all, but I've done a few of these great big blocks which I shall store up, but some I'm going to chop on my chopping block to get them into suitable logs to go in the esse. And then, and then I think I'm going to nip over to Julia's and have a cup of tea and help her fill up her skip that she's got going. But let's just chop a few of these up first. So, I've got these blocks, as you saw, on the block, ready to go. And I also have a trusty old-fashioned axe, which I shall swing and just try and slice them basically in two. So I've got my kindling, which will get the fire going. I've got my intermediate, which is stored in the house, as you saw. And then I've got the slightly bigger logs. Some of these, like that, could probably just go in, which is fine as it is. That will get, take it perhaps overnight. And others, a bit too big, so I just chop them in half. All that so I don't have to pay the big six the money. I put my money when I buy the logs. These were give, gifted to me, so I'm very lucky. Um, so it's free energy. Uh, but normally I get them from John, who's on the Whiston estate. And it's ash dieback normally that comes in. They've got to come down. So they're no use. I buy them, I burn them. Uh, they've absorbed the, t the CO2 in the, their lifetime. I'm burning them, I'm basically putting the CO2 back. Uh, so it's cyclical and sustainable. Let's do some chopping. Well, these are, as you saw, are very, very dry. Thanks to Liz, she's stored them for ages and uh, they're just perfect. They're gonna be really hot. They don't always chop quite so easy as, as this. Ah, uh, oh, there you go. So even though I live in a Victorian house, I'm sort of going back a little bit to how the Victorians would have heated their house. Of course, they probably would have had coal and when I moved in here, there was a coal bunker here, so they probably would have had coal, it would have been easier. But wood is cleaner and more sustainable, as I said before. And I love it, and I love the smell. And the SE is very good, and the front room is very good for it. So, and it keeps you fit. It's not just the flick of the switch, but I guess there's plenty of people watching thinking, yeah, I'll just stick with turning the knob and letting either the gas or the electric do it. I love this. I should be lighting a fire a bit later, but it's getting on for midday. So I said I'd help Julia. So I'm gonna whiz over there and help her with her skip and then come back and uh, test out the old Essie and the front room fire on my new sofa. Well, 
Well, I've got uh, one fire lit, and then there's the SE to do in a minute. And of course, I've got my logs here. Um, so I'm feeling very happy. Got Julia's skip done, so that's great. That can uh, be taken away when the skip people come, so I'm, I'm pleased to have helped her. And we've got some warmth. I don't have any central heating, so I rely on these fires in the cold temperature. And it's now coming into, uh, well, it's early November and it is getting chilly. So it's great to have the fire lit. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry it was another domestic one, but I thought you might like to see how I do all my logs. Um, I will be out and about very soon in some, with some more interesting videos. So do come back and watch those. In the meantime, give us a thumbs up, support what I do, become a patron, and I'll continue to make these videos. And thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Right, let's get some of these logs on then.